this story is basically the uh, the um, backstory to the orange is the new that whole orange is the new black. I have not watched that. Um, I started to read Piper Kerman's book. I found it just sort of a little disingenuous, sort of felt sorry for herself a little much. But no, it's a it's an actual uh, um, event. You know, um, some. Uh, Oh gosh, what would we say? You can't, I can't really call it youthful indiscretions because I was almost thirty years old. Um, but it was, uh, you know, a brush, you know, brush with the law. We kind of got mixed up in some heroin smuggling and uh, went to jail afterwards. And um, you know, it felt, uh, you know, uh, I felt a need to tell this story, um, not just as as vindication, just as as explanation. There were some other sort of stories floating around in the Chicago Tribune and elsewhere, which really got the story wrong. And I'm just like, okay, I'm not, you know, I'm gonna try to tell this story, say what, tell what really happened. And that was a, that was a tough one. Like, not unlike the gospel of Satan, you have this unsympathetic character and, and, and I'm an, an unsympathetic character. I'm a you know, criminal in this, in this, in this um, memoir. And how do I, how do I tell that? And how do I, you know, uh, and not necessarily gain sympathy, but gain, gain the reader's trust. How do I become a reliable narrator? And um, in short, the, you know, the answer was just you know, simply tell the truth. It's, you know, confession, um, you know, that the confessional mode uh, necessarily, uh, if you've done right, you win the, the, the trust of the reader. For that it was something like of a manager. You know, the first time I came through old O'Hare Airport, I mean, there must've been like, uh, you know, seven, eight, nine trips. I mean, I, I'm not even sure. And 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 there was one where we had like about five or six couriers coming through with. They had um, a couple, couple bags, like these carry-ons with stuff sewn inside, and there were like a few keys inside each one. So I don't know, like you know, it, 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 you know, certainly not like you know the super, you know, the people like moving stuff in ships or something. But as far as people, you know, were on commercial airplanes, pretty. You know, good like several dozen kilos. You know, and of course, you know, of course, in the old um, international rivals, it was just a big shed the size of a football field. And there's one, uh, there was one customs agent sitting on a stool at the, end, you know, hundred yards away reading a, a comic book. And there's you know three sets of doors, and he's just kind of ignoring everyone. And I'm getting about halfway there, and he looks up and he like looks right at me, you know, dead right at me. And I'm and I'm kind of looking out of the corner of my eye for someone, anyone I can fall in behind. And it's you know he's just looking right, and he and he stands up out of his chair and sidles, starts out. so I just head right at him, and he asks me the questions that I've been you know trained to answer. Where have you been? What was the reason for your travel? And I feel like my voice is fluttering up and down, you know, like a parakeet. And he says, "It's okay." Thank you. You know, have a nice day. You know, yeah. Enjoy the enjoy rest of your trip. Um, and that, that was. I mean, after there were some harrowing times, we went through uh, Singapore, um, not realizing at the beginning of the trip that there was a you know death penalty for carrying any drugs to Singapore, which was um, interesting. Uh, great heroin. A great uh, 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 adrenaline rush, always. And I was trying to put myself back in that, you know, what it felt like in that emotional space. I mean, ultimately, um, a bag didn't show up and a whole series of events cascaded. And, and I was and, and I and I felt some of the, the writing about it. I felt some of the panic and I tried to convey that, um, you know, that sense of time collapsing and telescoping back out, like circling around this um, transit lounge in Zurich looking for this bag that's supposed to be there that's not supposed to be there and making the phone call and they're saying no they they said that you you, you took it you they picked it up and I'm like no I didn't pick it you know and um and this great panic I mean I wrote I think I wrote about it it took me a, a number of years I mean it, it went through a screenplay iteration and then it finally became uh this as I say um this novel and um yeah, certainly I felt some of the, it, there was like a, you know, remove of 10 years, um, you know, so it wasn't, it wasn't raw, but I mean, I could certainly slip back into that, um, you know, that, that mindset. Basically, um, I, you know, friend, how, how does anything happen? A friend of a friend's sister, 
um, you know, happened to be involved probably like in some light, you know, heroin use in Chicago and her like Nigerian suppliers were like, hey, you know, we, you know, you want to make some money. Uh, we, we always needed white people to get it back in to the country. So this friend's sister was working as a heroin smuggler for a Nigerian, uh, uh, you know, uh, kingpin. And um, we were quickly introduced and then started working for him. Um, you know, just basically taking bags from, you know, simple, simple. Somebody once described to me as it's, you know, it's not, it's not complicated. You take the bag, you bring it and you drop it off and you're, you're done from, from Southeast Asia and Africa into Europe um, and Chicago. And uh, of course, in the end, everything went, you know, South and everybody got busted and everybody um, testified against one another and everyone went to jail and, and everyone got out and has had a sort of successful secondary career piper most of all because she wrote the story she you know she was she was a late entry into the game and really just kind of moved some money around but she wrote about her um her incarceration in a women's federal prison in connecticut at one year kind of a skid bid but it's an inherently sexy story you know lesbians and in, in lockup everyone wants to read about that the nigerians don't have the um sort of centralized um like uh you know structure that south american cartel has they're generally more um decentered so i found out later um that there was sort of one family that was involved in picking the stuff up in southeast asia um my family you know this fellow alaji um was involved in um in uh in picking it up from that first group and then passing it on to a third group who were, were, would then sell it to street gangs in Chicago. So they're really like three different um, groups. And I kind of met them all because, you know, what happened finally was, um, well, as I say, this bag essentially went missing in uh, Zurich airport. And so they, they uh, called me down, they called me to, uh, uh, to Benin, West Africa, right next to Nigeria. It's right where the, where it was the cradle of voodoo, um, uh, Benin, like uh, uh, Dahomey. And uh, they took me into the bush and we went into a little mud hut. And I, we'd fooled around with the marabous before. It was always fun meeting with Elaji. He was a very charismatic, six foot four, jovial, um, wily, uh, uh, you know, African fellow who, in, a Nigerian who always told us how much he loved us and so forth. It was all, you know, to, you know we were gone together. But I had to like um, take an oath and with, the, with the marabou, the, with the witch doctor, you know, in this little hut and he's tossing cowrie shells in a pan and shaking him and looking at me and drinking African gin and throwing blood around the room. And, uh, you know, basically decided that, um, you, you know, that I was telling the truth. I don't, I don't know if that's exactly how it works in voodoo that, that I don't know that I was, that my, my, I was, that I was correct, whatever that my, you know, um, and uh, so I was, you know, absolved. But I'd met like, you know, there was, uh, you know, when, and riding out into the bush, there was like a caravan of three or four different vehicles with like representatives of every one of the, those Nigerian families involved, you know, from point A to B to C. And uh, so, you know, all these big shots with gold rings and long white gowns were sitting in, you know, around, around me in the hut when they were doing this little um, <laughs> voodoo ceremony. Um, and so I, I did get to meet all those guys. Interesting about Alaji was, um, this fellow, he, he was, um, he kind of got called out by the U S government and, um, he got into a, he, uh, was elected Senator, uh, he, he was, a, you know, you know, federal Senator, Nigerian Senator, and he, he, he got into a power struggle with, um, oh gosh, I'm forgetting his name, the former president of Nigeria who kept trying to get the, sick the federal police and extradite him to Chicago and he and he really he really fought this thing um finally died of COVID you know it was like nothing could, nobody could nobody could touch this guy you know um and and, and finally it was he just one day died dropped out of COVID I know what's coming they didn't come and get me uh for like a year or two because they just take their time about these things and put you know put put the case together and um, they may have even called me to tell me I was a target of an, an investigation, but I didn't, I wouldn't accept the call. I got a, just a weird call one night and I was just too terrified. And I'm just like, 
Uh, no, nah, he's not here. So what happened was they showed up, you know, I'd moved from one place to another, to another without really, you know, trying to like, I had a credit card and stuff. Anybody who wanted to find me could find me. And they, you know, and they came and got me in Chicago one morning that like, you know, the dreaded knock came on the door, um, you know, and, and, uh, and that was it. You know, they just, you know, did fond adieu to your life as they're, you know, leading you into a car. <laughs> Eventually I wound up in a, in a prison camp and like, you know, Otisville, where like, you know, Michael Cohn, people do their time in, in Allenwood. But I was in, I was in um, Chicago MCC, which is a pretrial uh, holding place. It's just like, you know, cell blocks, um, you know, 88 guys in 44 rooms, a 14 story building in the South Loop um, for four years because Alaji was kind of he was on the run and he got caught bringing money into Heathrow in England and they had him there for a couple of years and he, he beat extradition and, 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 and made it back to England. And I just had to sit, sit and wait while this was happening. They needed me you know, to testify because as I say, everybody just, you know, testifies against everybody else because nobody wants to go to jail for 25 years, which is what the sentencing guidelines call for, you know, any kind, you know, any, any kind of, you know, commercial weight, you know, kilos, it's very quickly that you're looking at 30 years, you know, it's a very <laughs> effective uh, system the feds have. I, I don't know what the inciting incident was. I know that this story has been, you know, sort of percolating for a long time, ever since I was a little kid, um, kind of in awe, you know, you sit in church and there's organ music and high vaulted ceilings and, you know, candles and tinkling bells. And it's all very interesting. And, and a little later, the stories are captivating. And um, I think it was, you know, I, I took, I, I had my difference with some of the theology, I would argue with my catechism teacher about things like that. I don't know, you know, the Holy Trinity and stuff like this didn't seem um, not unlikely, but just as unnecessary. Um, and, and, and this idea, I, I mean, I've had this idea in my head for, you know, 30 or 40 years. So I, you know, um, that, um, you know, that Jesus humanity is certainly more interesting and more instructive than any, any idea of, of, you know, Jesus is, you know, God's son. That's, that's too easy. Um, and, uh, um, you know, I don't know. It may have, I, I think it was just, it's almost a voice in my head. I had this idea of this arch, um, knowing, uh, Satan character. I, you know, maybe I was just hearing those rhythms and I, and I decided I wanted to tell the, his story and his story quickly became, um, you know, the, the gospels, his story is, you know, recounting, um, his, his untold experience with, with, uh, with Jesus. Um, and it came, and it, you know, it just came, the writing came quickly. A lot of it, um, I just really trusted, um, the unconscious sort of urges since this story had been with me for so long. I feel like the unconscious had, had time to work and, and turn the soil and let this, you know, the story germinate. And um, once that, I think once the accents, the rhythms of the different characters sort of um, made themselves clear, the, the writing really came, you know, a page or two a night over a year or two. I mean, you know, the, the, the um, it came pretty quickly. With regard to the whole um, dialogue and, and character development and all these elements, you said the story bit in your head. Did the characters come after the story or in tandem with it? I mean, you already had that laid out mm. before. The no, I didn't really have it laid out. I mean, I knew um, that I wanted to write a story. Uh, I would say in his narrator telling his, you know, telling his story. And um, so he meets a mortal and... Um, uh, you know, dis, you know, bargains for the uh, mortal soul, and uh, in, in, in the mortal uh, pretty soon asks, "Well, you know, tell me about tell me about Jesus. This is what he wants is a down payment, you know, for his, you know, imm uh, imm immortal fame or whatnot." And, uh, and and the Satan's like, "Oh, Jesus, Jesus! Everyone wants to hear about Jesus." Okay, let me tell you about Jesus. And I and I and I realized that that um, in in beginning to tell that that here was. Um, well, this was an interesting story because um, it turns out that Jesus and the, the Satan, Satan are both aggrieved with God for the same reason. He, they both feel that they've been denied um, free will. They're both bound by um, 
you know, uh, some sort of ontological tie to God. Everything that the devil does is turns to God's greater glory. And of course, Jesus is fated to die on the cross. And the, the real the trick to the book then becomes um, how do they arrive at this foretold, foregone conclusion, sort of by their, their own logic, you know, um, and, 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 and that was um, th that like s s suddenly that, that occurred to me early on now how what exactly that logic was going to be was something that was really worked out in dialogue uh, form. Yeah, it's I mean, it's a novella, right? So there's not it's not a Byzantine, any kind of Byzantine um, plot. There's not a whole bunch of different characters. There's just the the, the main group of characters, uh, you know, uh, that, that we know from the Gospels, some traditional gospel chapters reimagined and then some other imaginary you know um gospel chapters you know, well they say you know death cancels all appointments right and so you know so does so does jail there are a number of things okay somebody's got to go to my apartment and get my shit out of there some you know my girlfriend my wife you know at, at the time was traveling and she was coming back and i'm like holy shit i've got to get word to her she can't just show up at the apartment and you know find a crime scene you know, and I contrived to like, you know, I had some phone calls. So I contrived to call a friend, to call her friend, to get in touch with her. Um, and again, it was a pre cell phone um, era. And um, otherwise, you know, you go, you go through this um, uh, frantic, you know, calculation about what, you know, what, what, what I have to do, but I have to go to work. I have to do, you don't have to do any of that, you know, and it's this horrific just um, cessation of like everything that you were doing. And suddenly you just find yourself thrown into a whole other um, routine, um, which is consists of nothing. You're just, you know, maybe sitting in a day room waiting to be, um, you know, for your indictment and all that stuff. And then, you know, um, you know, so it was a big uh, I couldn't wait to get to, to meet to, to get with the prosecutors. I'm like, Jesus Christ, let's get this thing rolling. What do they have, have against me? You know, um, and, you know, uh, so it was having to be arraigned, indicted, extradited from New York to Chicago, and then finally meeting with the, getting a lawyer and meeting with the prosecutors. And then finally you, you start to build a semblance of a life because you realize quickly that, well, I'm, you know, I'm still alive and I still have a life. And, and, and that, you know, certainly there are lovely days uh, just listening to, you know, NPR in your headphones and, and, and reading, you know, novels and drinking a cup of tea while, you know, you know whatever you know hellishness is going on outside in the unit um but i'll say that it was it was um you know it was uh, mcc chicago they had a whole bunch of like the feds are cracking down on a bunch of big gangs so there are a bunch of big you know legendary gang guys in there and they didn't want to tolerate a lot of shit it's just when in the absence of those guys there's the little dogs start yapping but these were guys um you know that commanded thousands of people on the street and they're fighting for their lives and maybe you're helping them you know edit their legal work or you know helping you know so I, you know I, yeah so you know so i was about 100 or 150 pages into that after smuggler and that's when the uh you know gospel of satan arrives unbidden and i and i wrote that and i wrote that now i'm going back to sins of our fathers which is um you know, they say everybody has a story, right? And this is probably the one, you know, not, I, you know, not you know, everybody gets arrested. So it has that story. And um, this is the family story in multi-generational, um, uh, you know, family saga occasioned by um, my dad coming home from the, uh, from the service, just boot camp, whatever, two years in the Marines and cl claiming he found a note on the front door moved. You know, and his and, and the door is locked, and his parents have moved, and here he is, you know, standing there with nothing. Um, and and how did how does he how does he how did he get from that point in a few short years to becoming a family man and a father and and you know and this this figure? And I and I and I could never understand that. And so the, it's an attempt to like fill in these gaps in the family history um, of fathers and grand you know grandfathers. And, and, and I guess, you know, apparently my, my, my dad's parents didn't really just move away. They, they moved a month later, but in my dad's poetic imagination, he found a note on the door. And, and I kind of use that as, an, as, a, as a permission and as a method just to, to do this sort of, you know, you know um, fictionalization 
of you know real material in in the hopes of you know finding like a deeper you know poetic truth turns out both of my um my my uh dad's stepfather and my mother's dad were both bo uh, amateur boxers in greater hartford and i think that they have to like they have to meet in the ring unbeknownst to one another so there's you know certain like a lot of like crazy like you know fictionalization goes on um but a lot of it's just trying to reimagine stuff that i that i know happened you know um you know that my you know they went on you know that my grandmother and mother drove down to see my dad in the service and uh when he was in boot camp and you know the ceo got all steamed up and let them in anyway with a birthday cake and then made the the, the guys ate the cake in eight seconds afterwards um uh you know uh, just trying to um i think it, i don't know I'm, I'm assuming it's a universal story right i mean there's the 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 universal is in all personal stories have those universal appeal